Hey everyone, here we are on Bird Watcher page two. And um, this is going to have two flaps. Um, it's, it's, it's really relatively simple, but it, it's really cool when it's finished. Um, it's, it's a neat uh, flip flap, almost accordion style, but not quite. Okay, so the first flap is eight and a half by six. So it's eight and a half by six. Excuse me, you're going to score a half inch on the eight and a half inch side and um, dry fit it. Make sure it's not hanging off the edges. I had to take a tiny little bit off the edge so it wasn't hanging past the edge of the pocket page. Then I found the center line for the pocket page and the center line for the flap. I'm going to line these up and apply this flap. And again, if this is eight and a half by six, score half inch on the eight and a half inch side and then center it on your pocket page. Okay, that looks good. Now the second one is six and a half by six, six and a half by six. You're gonna score a half inch on the six and a half inch side. Now this flap goes down and this flap is gonna go up and we're going to bring it down and center it on this flap. So the flap that we just installed, we're going to center this flap on. So I found my center line right here and then my center line right here. And I'm gonna line these up and remove my tape and lay this down. Pretty straightforward. And then once I get everything laid down, I'm gonna take my eraser and clean everything up before I start adding my designer paper. Oops. Okay, there we go. So this opens up and this opens down. So this is what it's supposed to look like when you've got it all down. Now I'm gonna take my magic eraser. Doesn't have to be a magic eraser, but that's what I like to use. And I'm gonna clean everything up. Yep, that's it. Okay, so I've picked out a couple of the papers. I've got the A sides lined up and then I'm gonna pause and get everything ready for the B side. This is going to be the six by six panel. So I, I like a 16th inch border. So I start with a six by six. And then when I get to the designer paper, I take an eighth inch off height and width and then center it on the panel. And I have a 16th inch border, which is a pretty tight border. Some people like it a little bit bigger. Okay, there we go. All right. I gotta think about my magnets before I get too far. Um, we're going to trim out the top and bottom here with this red. And it should be that this is just about an inch. So we're going to, I'm going to mark it and trim it. And then apply it. So I'm pushing it so that just a slightly, a little bit of it is going right beneath uh, that hinge on that flap. And it turns out, I laid this in the um, trimmer, and it turns out that this is one inch. Okay, that's what it's gonna be, one inch. I'm gonna lift the edge just ever so slightly. So when I go to apply this, it will slide right slightly behind the hinge and the flap. Okay. Okay. 
one. Oh, I'm gonna burnish that all in place. There we go. So now that, since I know that's one inch, I'm gonna trim this down to one inch. We're gonna ink it and lay it down right here. And then we've got this little frame. There we go. Okay, so the next pieces I'm gonna lay down are these two side pieces. And they are gonna go like so. And I'll tell you, these are, I went ahead and made these a little bit uh, wider. They're just easier to deal with. These are one and a half inches wide by seven and seven eighths. Okay, and they're gonna go actually on the base. And then I'm gonna take a quick break and figure out how we're gonna keep everything closed. That looks like I need to take off a little bit more. Now let's try it. Yep, that looks good. close it all up again just because I want to make sure I am not uh, putting my paper in upside down. So as you can tell, we're going to do some color blocking on the center. So that looks nice. Okay, let's see how we did on this one. I think I might need to trim it a little bit too. Oh no, I'm good. It looks good. Okay, I've got it already inked. <laughs> Nala came to see me. She brought in a bone. So it sounds like she's actually chewing ice. You might hear it in the background a little bit. Hopefully it's not too annoying. Okay, so that is, we've got basically our A side, most of our A sides. Uh, well, the A side as far as everything being closed put together. So now I need to think a little bit about how I want to keep this closed. I think I'm going to wind up using two sets of magnets, um, which I don't like to do on a page if I can avoid it, but I don't feel bad because page one had no magnets. So that's kind of nice. So now that I'm thinking about it, I think that's what I'll do. So I'm going to place a magnet or set of magnets on this flap and that flap. Uh, I don't have the right tape in here. I hate that. Oh well. I can do it. I can do it with this. It just doesn't soften it the way I want it to. Normally I use um, a 5 8 inch width and that way it goes all the way around the magnet softening the edge. Unfortunately the, um, the magnets just have a straight edge, they, they're not beveled. I wish they were and laid flatter and just had a, a mound to them. Then they don't show as much through the paper. Um, it's not bad on pattern paper, but when you have light paper, the edges of the magnets seem to stick out. OK, 
Okay, that's that. Now we'll do the same thing on this side. Okay, let's make sure all my tape is down good. Okay, so I've got a, a set of magnets behind this flap and a set of magnets behind this flap. Okay, I'm gonna take a break, line up my B-sides. When I get back, we will we'll finish page two. Hey, I'm back and I'm we're ready to go ahead and finish up page two. So I've got the B-sides lined up and then I also cut out these um, large stamps <laughs> and I'm hesitating because I can't remember where I got them from. If I got them, I think they're the back side of one of the ephemera cards. Ugh, sorry, I cut things ahead of time and then I just lose track of where it came from. Hmm. Mm. Nope. Wasn't the small ephemera cards, maybe, I mean large ephemera. Well, I guess not. I guess it's, uh, gosh, I don't know. I'm stalling, because I just don't know where I cut it from. Well, there you are. It was, there was four of them, and they were side by side. I had to cut them all apart. <laughs> And I have two that I haven't backed with cardstock, and I'm kind of trying to find them so I can tell you where they came from. Anyways, I'll go ahead and get started with covering the rest of that, and hopefully once I get a few things glued down, uh, the other ones that I cut apart will reveal themselves, and I can flip them over and tell you where I got them from. Okay, with that, which wasn't much, <laughs> I've chose the binoculars to go on the flip side, and then we're going to use a second band. Um, this is not quite uh, the same width. It is just slightly under an inch, and there's really nothing magic about this number. It happened to be a scrap I had left over, so I'm making that work for me. I had a large enough piece of the green that I could cut it to any size I wanted, um, so that's, that's what I did. So I'm going to use my scrap. I'm going to place it here on the bottom. And first I'm dry fitting it real quick. It looks good. Every once in a while, more often than I'd like to admit, I start jabbering away and I can't remember if I actually hit the record button because I have done that before, completed a whole page and not videotaped it because I forgot. I sat down, put the camera up, didn't hit, didn't hit the record button. So it is running, so that's good. And uh, this is from the 8x8 collection. It's just the reverse side. And this is actually going to be applied to the bottom of the top panel. There we go. And then we're gonna apply this here. And I'll, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll put both the borders on the outside, which I couldn't do because when I laid this to strip down, it was revealing the magnet. So I just shifted and put it on the bottom. There we go. Oh, my dog's going to start barking in a minute. I think my husband's home. So bear with me. It won't last long, but she gets very excited when dad comes home. 
There it is. <laughs> there he is. You can hear the key in the door. Okay. All right, now we'll do dress the bottom part. And again, you see where the hinge is? So the red is on the top panel. This green will be along the bottom. And I think these binoculars are so cool. And I'm hoping I have enough left over at the end that I can fussy cut some of them out and just place them here and there in the book because I think they're really cool. The other thing that's nice are the flowers. Um, on some of the floral sheets, they're perfect for cutting apart, which I intend to do. There we go. <clears throat> All right, there we go. Isn't that lovely? So that is the inside, the B side of the top of the small flap. Now we still have to do this side. So I chose these, um, it pulls the pattern back in from the front and I've trimmed it out and this is from the Patterns and Solids. I can hear my husband out in the yard. Tomorrow's trash day, so he's doing the trash thing. Oh my gosh, I have some exciting news. So I'm sure the regular viewers will be cheering me on. The rest of you might think I'm a little nuts, but my son is graduating, and I mentioned in um, one of the videos in this series that he's actually gonna have a graduation ceremony, which I'm excited about because we weren't sure that was going to happen with COVID. But the other thing is, he just got an interview for a job tomorrow. So that's exciting. It will be his first real job <laughs> in a restaurant. And it's one of the ones that he likes. And uh, part of their offering is he gets a free meal with every shift. <laughs> so he's excited about that. Anyways, that's exciting. That happens tomorrow. Tomorrow, what is tomorrow? April 20th at 2.30. So you guys give me, give me good thoughts, good feelings. I didn't realize it, but I hadn't inked this. So I'm going to dry fit it one more time. I think I might need to trim a little more off. Yeah, I think I do. There we go, that's good. Gonna ink it. I think this is pretty too. And and I like these simple pages. Um, Cause sometimes, you know, it's really hard to look at that beautiful page and beautiful paper and imagine putting a photo over it. But when you have these simpler patterns, and uh, not simple because it's, a, it's actually a complicated pattern, but it's simple because of the color um, palette that they use, just sort of this monochromatic pattern, uh, color palette, uh, makes it easier to imagine putting a photo up on top of it. And that's why I reserve, reserve uh, most of these for the B-side. Stop turning my glue up 
upright because it's taken too long for the glue to come back down. Okay. Okay, there it is. So there is the top panel. And the second, and I always try to make sure that they're gonna they go together, even if it doesn't necessarily match the top side. That when it's open, it has a, its own statement. Um, just like this has its own statement. There's green in the side, so I could pull that in. There's red in the side, so I could pull that in. But this is one statement, and this is another. I like them both. Um, if I had to choose, I'm more partial to the brown here. I'm not even sure why. Um, so I didn't find the other two stamps that I had cut out. And I'm going to do that real quick. Um, so I can tell you where they came from. <clears throat> if you saw my desk, you'd know why I can't find them. just had them. Well, I don't know. I'm not sure where they came from. But I definitely cut them apart. I thought they were on the flip side of one of the ephemera cards, but I went through the ephemera cards and I can't find it. So the only other place it could be is the flip side of this. Um, which I don't think it is. Well, anyway, I, I can't figure it out. So we're going to go ahead and lay them down. I'm sorry I can't tell you where I got them from. <laughs> But they were definitely cut apart. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is this. Now, they're both sort of facing each other, and that's deliberate. And I'm just going to offset them like this. So from a design perspective, you've got a couple of options here. I like this. I'm going to pull in page three real quick. So here's what page three looks like. So I really like the way this all lays out. I think it looks beautiful. But if you want to preserve part of this panel for a photograph, then what I would recommend is a slight stagger here. And then you would still have room for a Four, four by six, actually, I would crop it down to be five by three. Um, and that would still fit tucked in behind these two. So it's, it's another option. It really depends on how many photos you have. Personally, I like um, just opening it up and looking at the beautiful papers and knowing that all the photos are behind it. But that's a personal preference. And I'm going to go ahead and put them down just as they appear here. Once I get clear on um, the composition, and I think that's it. So that's what I'm going to do. And somewhere those other two stamps will turn up. Just not in time for, <laughs> for this video, unfortunately. So I'm looking for an even border, um, the side and the bottom. It doesn't have to be, um, but that's kind of my aesthetic. It's not for everybody, but I love my right angles. So that is the end of page two. Page two. So one more time, there is 
the inside of the small flap and the inside of the large flap, which I really like. And I can, it's easy to see a four by six photo here, a vertical four by six photo. Here, I think I might put two four by fours. I don't think I have anything cut out that size, but um, just to give you an idea, it would look something like that. And then, whoops. And then a four by six down here. So there you go. I like it. I like it. And that's it.